this is Dr. Daniel Pisanski with Balanced Chiropractic and today I want to shoot a video for you uh, about how to shovel snow. Uh, as you can see I'm not outside in the snow yet and that is because there are there is you want to you want to warm up before you shovel snow. A lot of people get up early in the morning and do it right when they get out of bed and their and their bodies and their muscles are just tight and compressed and they go out and they try to shovel a bunch of snow really fast and they end up spraying their muscles and irritating their joints and they end up in my office. So I'm going to show you a couple different things that you can do before you even shovel snow to decrease your chance of getting injured. The first thing you can do, and this is really good to do every morning, is, is get like a three quarter inch uh, dowel rod or use your broom, a broomstick or or something similar to this and stretch out your lower back and hamstrings and to do that all you got to do is bring the, the, the dowel behind your shoulders if it's really hard for you to get this behind your shoulders that means that we have work to do on your neck and shoulders and you've been at the computer too long or, or at a repetitive stress type job too long and your shoulders are locking up so first of all get the dowel behind your back you're gonna, I'm going to turn it aside so you can show me, or so I can show you. And all you got to do is you got to bend your knees slightly, bring your hips back, and then just push back with your hips, and you'll feel a stretch in your hamstrings, and then you squeeze your glutes together and you come back through. This is going to loosen up your hamstrings and your glutes to get you to warm those up before you get out there and start shoveling snow. Your glutes are what stabilize your lower back. So it's very important, especially if you're at a job where you sit all day, to get these glutes warmed up before you do any type of physical activity because there's a higher risk for you to injure your back. So I do this about 10 times. Keep your chin tucked, your spine straight. We don't want to see any of this type of thing because then you're using your lower back and you can hurt yourself just doing this exercise. So avoid that. Knees bent, pushing the hips straight back. Keep your chin tucked, spine straight. Squeeze your glutes coming back through. The next one you can do is just <clears throat> a squat to get your legs and body warmed up. So to do that, I'm gonna step back a little bit. You want your feet shoulder width apart. You wanna turn your knees out, not in, out so they lock out. And you're just coming straight down and then up. Keeping your head forward. Not looking down, not looking up, head forward, chin back. This is how it looks from the front. And then we'll go to the side, and it looks like this. See, and I'm, my, my legs are only going to about 45 degrees. I'm not sitting all the way down to 90 degrees, but just getting warmed up here is good. Do that about 10 times. Okay, the next thing that we can do is some foam rolling. And to do that, we have to get down on the floor. You want have an orange trigger point roller. What you want to start out with is a like a black foam roller if you've never done this before. And there's lots of tutorials on Facebook, uh, just not Facebook, but uh, YouTube. Just <clears throat> uh, search foam roll, glutes, lower back, middle back exercises and all kinds of different things will come up will come up I'm just going to show you what I do on the foam roll to to loosen myself up so I put it sideways here I start with one hand back just like this and then I put my weight on my glute here and I just go back and forth to my sit bone to the back of my pelvis some people call that your hip back here. It's not, it's your pelvis. And I just roll up my glute 10 times. So I do 10 times on this side. Then I go to the other side, hand and back. Weight on your glute right here 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. And the next thing you can do is roll out your lower back. So you bring this into your lower back here. You're going to put your hands back 
bring your feet in, you're going to push through your heels right here to bring your glutes up, and then you're going to steady yourself with your hands back here, and then you're just going to roll up and down about six inches of your, up and down your lower back. And you'll roll a little bit backwards, so you might have to reposition the roll, but just up and down six inches. Then you just turn your weight to the side and do six times on the right side of your spine, or 10 times on the right side of your spine, just like this. Keep your abdominals tight, this will help. If you have weak abdominals, this will be hard for you. That means you have to check out some of our abdominal exercises that we're gonna have on our website soon. And then just you keep rolling back a little bit, and then go to the left side, 10 times. Just like this. This is great to do in the morning when you first get up and before you go to bed. To get those muscles loosened up, um, get ready to go, and then before you go to bed so you can sleep well. Next, is you're gonna bring this to about, right here, to the, to the bottom of your middle back or the top of your lower back, about six inches from your tailbone. And now this is a little bit harder you got to use your glutes, and you got to use your abdominals, keep your chin tucked, come up like this, and you're just going to roll back and forth up to the bottom of your shoulder blades, to get that lower back worked out, just like this, and I'm going to bring it in again, and we're going to do the same thing here, we're going to cross our arms, then we're going to lean to the right, keep the chin tucked, that gives you good stretch in your back and allows the muscles to pop out um, in your middle back between your spine and your shoulder blade so that you can roll them out. 10 times on this side, and then we'll go to the other side another 10 times. Okay, good. Now, bring it in a little bit farther. Now bring this right to the middle of your back and go all the way up to the base of your neck where that bump is at the bottom of your neck and roll out between your shoulder blades. You might get some popping and cracking when you go through this. 10 times. Eight, nine, 10. Then you're gonna just slightly turn to do this. You gotta keep your abdominals tight, or glutes tight, abdominals tight. Turn to the right, 10 times again. Eight, nine, ten. Right ten times, and then to the left ten times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now we can even loosen up our neck a little bit with this. I'm gonna bring this in. A little bit here, see if you can see me. You're gonna bring your neck, it's gonna be right on the on the on the foam roll, and you're just gonna roll from your from the, your spine to your right, and then back to your spine. And you'll feel a ropey band that you'll be you'll be rolling over. Do that ten times. Seven, eight, nine. And then go the other way, ten times. Six, seven, eight, nine. Then you can even put it at the base of your skull, right here. And you can go up and down. Sometimes you have a headache, this works really good. Or you can go to the side and just really work these little muscles at the base of your skull to get really tight on a lot of people, especially if you clench your teeth at night or if you grind your teeth at night or clench your teeth during the day. These muscles get really tight, give you headaches, give you migraines. A lot of people don't know about that. And then do the other side. 10 times. Okay, now you're warmed up and you're ready to go do some shoveling. So we're gonna show you how to shovel and how not to hurt yourself using a snowblower today. All right, thank you guys. We'll see you outside. Here we are again, we're outside, 
Make sure you have your warm weather gear on. It's been 20 below with 50 below wind chills lately, so make sure you're prepared. This is North Dakota. Most of you should know how how to dress for the weather, but some people aren't from here. Um, so make sure you dress in layers. You want your first layer to wick the sweat away, second layer, or your coat, or you want to protect you against the wind, basically. Make sure your hair your head's covered with a hat so your ears don't get frostbit and you got good gloves on so your fingers don't get uh, frostbit because if you pick up wind chills you can freeze your extremities fairly quickly if you don't know what you're doing um so what i want to start out with is there's three different types of shovels that i like to use when i um when i shovel my driveway or sidewalk um I like to use it. I call this a grain shovel because I grew up on the farm, so it's it's a little a little sturdier. You can throw a lot of snow with it, and you can also kind of chip away at some of the hard snow. Here's more of a, a smaller um, spade type shovel. It's not a spade. I'm not that square a square spade. Let's call it. But um, this is really good to get rid of like hard packed snow. And then you got your your regular snow shovel. Um, this is great for pushing snow and picking up and throwing light snow. This shovel is better for picking up heavier types of snow uh, and sleet and slush and all that kind of stuff. So what I start out with is the grain shovel and you want to get down, get down underneath the snow and you want to have one foot forward that you're bracing on and your back foot. And here you want your abdominals tight. And you want to pick up the snow. And the key here is to move your feet. Move your feet, not your torso. So you don't want to come up and go like this. Because you're twisting things. And you don't want to come up and overextend back like this and twist. What you want to do is grab the snow pick it up, move your feet, dump it. Easy as that. We'll go back a little bit farther. So you want to get in underneath the snow. With, this is kind of packed down, so I'm using the, the grain shovel. Bend your knees and get your glutes engaged, pushing your hips back just like we practiced before. Bring this up and just come forward and throw it. That's all you got to do. You don't want, here's the wrong way to do it. You come up like this, like that. And you twist and you're throwing like that. that you're gonna throw your shoulder out, you're gonna throw your back out, and then you're gonna be in to see me in a couple days. Next one is the uh, snow shovel. This one is just primarily just a push. So you're just pushing the snow up and, and getting it into a pile, or you're pushing it and um, and then scooping and throwing again. So this one, I have my right foot forward, so you're gonna bend the knees, keep your butt out, keep your abdominal side, come up, move your feet, not your waist, then just throw it, simple as that. Here, I'll do it one more time. Push, get some snow, bend the knees, get the butt out, abdominals tight up, move your feet, throw, easy as that. So that's how to not hurt your back when you're shoveling. For example, with the snowblower in just a minute, and that will be good for today. Okay, the last thing that I'm gonna talk about today is is the snowblower. Because a lot of people say they just snowblowed a little bit of snow when they come into my office two days from now after, they, after it snows, and their back hurts. And the reason that most people hurt their back snowblowing is when they pull it. So, See my snowblower right here. I'm gonna just show you. I'm not gonna turn it on because it takes it loud. But what people do is if the if the snowblower isn't uh, an automatic um, drive forward or automatic backwards, or if you decide not to use that, people will pull and hyperextend their back, bringing the burp vertebral joints together causing inflammation and spasming me. So if you found this video useful, please like, share and tag a friend and we hope to see you soon.